surviving the holidays. When you have had toxic people in your life, when you've had narcissists in your family or your friends or whatever, and how that affects you and how, what can you do to keep yourself like flowing in the positive this holiday season, because it's what it's about, right? It's not about surviving it and like holding them back. It's about having some good times for yourself too. Recognizing the truth and then stop telling yourself stories about it. Let's talk about that. So when you are with family that's toxic, a lot of times what we're trying to do is fit it into a box of what we wish it was. We're trying to like reconcile it and fix it and make it better in our minds. We know we know we can't, but we're trying, right? And so we're engaging with people as if there's going to be something different about the situation that's going to make it better. And we know it's not. So if you can recognize and allow the truth to be there, allow what is, is what, you know, the Popeye, I am what I am, right? Allow that to be the truth so that you're not fantasizing about something that should be, and you're not spending your time and spinning your wheels on trying to create something that will never be in that family. It allows you then to set boundaries, which is number two thing I want to talk about setting boundaries. So it allows you to go from, oh my gosh, I got to fix it. Oh, I have to talk to mom and she's going to need this and they're going to need that to, you know what? They have their needs, whatever. I'm not here to serve that. I'm here to have a holiday with my family and there are certain people here I'd like to talk to. So you get to set those boundaries, set the boundaries. Who cares if other people get upset with them? You over time can learn to to have people see you differently, to shift the perspective of you being the caregiver, the peacekeeper, the scapegoat, all of that. But it takes some serious boundaries work. And it's not always possible if you have really pushy, insistent narcissists in the family. So setting boundaries could be something as simple as a time limit, a um, conversation topics you will not talk about, escape plans, bringing a friend with you. You know, these are all things to place boundaries between you and the toxic people. Choose off topic type um, types of things to say, to talk about, and don't engage if it's a topic that you've set a boundary on. So, so let's say that you're like, I'm not talking politics this year because uncle so-and-so is there and he's super toxic and all he's going to do is push his politics on everyone. And when he starts you have something else you either say that just diverts things. You go, whoa, that's interesting. Oh my gosh, look over there. You know, like basically you're like squirrel, all right? Not doing it, not talking about it. And and if that doesn't work, you you start (laughs) coughing. (coughs) Excuse me. Oh my gosh, excuse me. I got to go get a drink. You see, diversion, deflection, get away from the topics you don't want to talk about. You have a right and to talk about what you want to talk about in life. You're not, you're not um, a prisoner of their delusional world if you set a boundary. All right. And if you know the things, like know what you're going into, if you're going to be around or have phone conversations with a toxic parent or sibling or whatever, know the boundaries, know the things that you you know they're going to bring up and have a little list, especially if you're on the phone or texting that are the off limit topics so that, and then have little ideas of where you can point that finger to the squirrel, right? Okay. Have an escape plan. So you guys, if you're at a holiday party, if you're at a family function, if you are at, if you're on the phone, it doesn't matter if you are in a situation where there's toxic people around you during holiday, or even if you're in a situation where you've had so many toxic people in your life and holidays have become this really triggering experience for you and you're at, say you're at a work party or a friend's party, that's totally happy. No one's toxic there. It could be for any reason. Have an escape plan. Have an escape hatch, right? Like it's not escapism. It is taking care of yourself. This is a self-care tip, okay, to use the bathroom go, you know, take a, take a walk outside, um, run to the store, whatever it is, like say you're at a holiday party with friends and you just need a break, but you want to come back and nobody's toxic there. Everything's beautiful and lovely. Okay. But you're super triggered. You're like overwhelmed by the people. You're just like, ah, holidays. Oh, I can't do this. Just be like, you know what? 
I think we need more soda and run to the store and come back. You don't have to actually get this right or be like, I forgot something, blah, 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 and go get it. Oh, what I need tonight is this. Go and do it. Just get out of there for a few minutes and come re-engage after you've taken the break or take a walk around the block if it's warm enough or sit in the backyard or find a quiet corner or find the quiet people in the room that are kind and 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 bring the energy down. That's what I do. I find the quiet folks and, and sit with them and we just sit quiet for a while and we all get it. Um, so breaks are important. Even if the very least you can always go to the bathroom a lot and let people think something's wrong with your tummy, you know, who cares? Just do it. Just get the breaks. Um, disengage if others are drinking heavily or getting overly toxic because of it. All right. Watch people pay attention. If you have someone in the family that's toxic or someone, whatever, and they're drinking heavily because of the holidays and they're starting to get belligerent, do not engage, step away. And it's not, it's okay to do that. All right. Um, do not expect to be good or happy. Don't expect to be happy. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I said that, but I did. Don't expect to be happy. Just see what it is and accept it. Allow it for a minute. Okay. You're choosing to do this. You get to make a choice to leave or to stay. You don't have to be thrilled the whole time. If your choice is to be there because you, for whatever reason, it, your emotional state isn't, um, it's important, but it's not everything. Does that make sense? Like if you aren't happy at holiday gatherings or talking to people over the holidays or whatever, but you want to anyway, just to allow the fact that you're not happy right now, don't, go too far into it. Oh my gosh, this is so awful. I'm not happy because then you're like feeding that. If you're trying to make a change in your life where you're like, I would like to start liking holidays. I've gotten all the toxic people out of my life and I'm, or he, here, someone asked about being alone. I've gotten all the toxic people out of my life and I'm choosing to do this on my own. And I'm choosing to be, you know, alone here over the holidays. And I'm sad. Okay. If you're feeding the sad too, too much, you are recreating a whole new tradition of sadness around the holidays. So sometimes it takes uh, redirection and distraction and acknowledging that sadness and saying, what else is possible? Okay, I'm sad right now. What else is possible? It's it open that door for yourself to have a different experience. Um, it can help you a lot. Okay. Don't listen or engage with gossip, drama, gaslighting, gray rock that crap. Just gray rock it. Don't listen to or listen to the gossip. If it, it doesn't hurt anyone, go with it. Okay. So if a narcissist, they love to, you know, especially certain family members, right? They love to. And that gossip keeps them from attacking everyone. Go with it as long as it's not hurting anyone else, right? As long as it's not gossip about a person that it would be harmful to them. And then uh, recognize what's happening. Oh, this is gossip. I'm engaging with them in order to like keep them quiet and, and, and kind and then step away. All right. Find your way out. Otherwise, don't gossip. Gossip's awful. And it, and it's, um, it's sometimes though, the reason I threw that in there is sometimes it is a way for certain, like if a certain narcissistic person is attacking personally and, and, and then they throw in a bit of gossip, I'll say, Oh, tell me more. And it's not that I want to engage in the gossip. It's that I want to take them off the one track of attack onto the next one. And then I can step away from that. So it's like a step down gray rocking kind of thing. Cause if I just go plain old gray rock, the attacks keep coming, right? Like that would, that was an, an old situation, no longer in, but it's kind of how I handled it. But otherwise if gossip is harming people, if it's in this, if it's benign, who cares? But if it's harming someone else, if it's about someone else, if it's, you know, cruel step away, gray rocket. Um, it is not an obligation to be around others during the holiday. This is your life and your choice. It's going to feel like an obligation. And where you do have certain um, things set up in our life that have become obligation. But if it's not choice, it's a burden. And we don't want to be living our life just fulfilling things that are one burden after another, right? So make a choice if you're going to do it understand it's not an obligation. There may be some guilt around it. And, and then you work on the guilt, but you know what? It's, it's your choice to be able to choose for yourself what, where, what you're going to do with your life. Right. And, and that's where hopefully we can get to, if not this season <laughs> next, understand that it's not you. Okay. You guys, it's not you. It never was you. You have toxic people in your life and that's their problem. We have to let them 
be them. We have to allow them to be them and us to be us and to separate from that, get the enmeshment, like, you know, a little bit of space there so that you can recognize this was never you to begin with. It becomes and it feels like us because we're engaging in it. If you stop engaging, you will see it never was you because they're going to keep doing it and you're not. And you're like, okay, was never me to begin with, right? All right. Um, see the toxic patterns and do not engage or take them personally. That's part of what I'm saying here. And um, observe, do not absorb. There's another little phrase. Stay as neutral as you can. And remember, no is a positive word. Boundaries, right? 